This is uh, May 30th, 2021, Holy Trinity Sunday. We begin our summer worship here with something a little unique for you. We know the summer is busy and want to give you a uh, model for you today, an opportunity that you can take to do worship wherever you are at this summer, whether it be around a campfire, a, a t picnic table, or out on a boat. You'll find in the uh, website under worship, under bulletins, you'll find a bulletin summer 2021 on the road. Just print that off and it'll give you a simple order of service. And for each week, we'll give you a psalm and the three readings. An opportunity for you to do worship wherever you are. So we'll be modeling that for you today. But just a reminder also that uh, even though it's summer, things still keep happening here at Good Shepherd. So I'd like to share a few of our ministry highlights with you. Keep in mind summer youth events are beginning and registrations for canoe trips, vacation Bible school and camp opportunities are on the website. Check under Youth Ministries, Summer Youth Events for more information. VBS is back in house and we will be having that beginning June 13th till the evening of the 16th in the evenings. God gets it is the theme. The ABCs are back with adult Bible and catechism for summer 2021. Beginning May 30th, look for the posted video on the week's topic on the Facebook group or on the YouTube playlist on Mondays. Then join us for a reflective discussion on Sundays beginning June 6th at 10 a.m. in the Linney Center. Summer means a change for our worship schedule. Sunday mornings will still continue to be 9 and 11, Saturday night at 5, but our Wednesday service is, becomes worship in the park beginning June 2nd. At 6.30 we meet at Hillside Park, shelter number 2. Just come on in, you can't miss us. Join us, bring a lawn chair or blanket to sit under the beautiful stars and enjoy the wonderful outdoor worship in nature. Thank you, for it is through your offerings, your times, your talents, your financial support that we are able to do the mission and ministry we have here at Good Shepherd. We look forward to sharing that with you, and we look forward to sharing this summer with you. Welcome to worship.
reminder that uh, this order of service, this very simple order of service, can be found uh, on the website under worship bulletins. Just look for the on the road uh, worship bulletin. So this is the format we'll be using today. Uh, minus, uh, this, this is minus the communion. But let us begin with prayer. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with, with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank my Bible at Home uh, Zoom group here who's been very loyal this summer for this year for uh, helping out here today. And Darcy, why don't you introduce yourself and... My name is Darcy Dykema. Okay. And will you read for us this week for our prayer of praise, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Thank you. And now we'll have some children's time. So thank you guys for all being here today. I'm John Solberg and these are my kids, Gus and Anna, and this is my sister Jessica and her husband Ryan. And it's a pretty special day because we're about ready to go out to the cemetery and bury my grandma Thelma, who just passed away last week at 104 years old. And so I want to ask you kids, where do you think grandma Thelma went to now that she passed away? Heaven. Yeah? How do you know that? Mm -hmm. School. School taught you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to tell you something, and, and this is the truth, and that's that Jesus promises us in the text this week in the book of John that if you're baptized with water and the Spirit, that you go to a better place when you pass away. And I can tell you right now that Grandma Thelma was certainly, she had the Spirit in her because she was a good lady. She helped other people. She was a school teacher. She played the church organ. She was so kind and always helpful. And so she lived every day like she had the spirit in her. What kind of things can you guys do to show that you have God's spirit inside of you? Um, help somebody out. You can be helpful, yeah, if somebody needs help. You can be kind to other people. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that uh, Jesus says if you're baptized with water, that that's part of it too. And so uh, do you guys uh, remember that you were baptized? Yeah. When you're baptized, the preacher takes a little water and he puts it over your head. And he baptizes you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so do you think that Grandma Thelma was baptized? Yeah. How do you know? Because she went up there. Well, I want to show you something. I have something very special to show you here today. 
<clears throat> this is Grandma Thelma's baptismal certificate from 1916. It's written in Norwegian, actually. And it says on here that Grandma Thelma was baptized on the 18th of September, 1916. And it's got, down at the bottom, it's got uh, the names of a couple of witnesses who were there with her. So this certificate here is proof that Grandma Thelma was baptized with water too. And so we can have faith that she goes to heaven. Were you too baptized? Yes. How do you know? Because you told us. Yeah, you have a certificate at home, but do you know that there are some witnesses here for that too? Just like Grandma Thelma had witnesses at her baptism, Gus, who is the witness at your baptism? Yeah, Auntie Jess and Uncle Ryan were there, so they, they can remind you that you were baptized with water. And I'm telling you right now, who do you think I was baptized? Yeah. How do you know? Because my godparents are right over there. My Auntie Joe and Uncle Ken uh, were there when I was baptized. And their boy, Chris, he was baptized too. Do you know how we know that? Because his godparents are right over there. It's my mom and dad. So we got a whole circle here of people that remind each other that we were baptized. And if we live with the Spirit and we're baptized, we go to heaven in the end. And we're at a better place. And so we don't have to be sad that Grandma Thelma died today because we know that she went to heaven. And just like we can all be comfortable that someday when we pass on, we'll all go to heaven too. So why don't you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you so much for water and the new life that it gives to us and the new life that it's given to the prairie this week. We also thank you for the wind today. It's blowing so strong and even though we don't know where the wind comes from or where it goes, God reminds us that it blows on through and it's here today. And we can all be thankful that because we're baptized with water and we have the Spirit inside of us, that we can rest peacefully at night knowing that in the end, we'll all be okay and back together again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome back for our readings. Our first reading from Isaiah. Jeannie, would you like to introduce yourself and do that for us? Jeannie Weary, reading from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Wonderful. Our second reading comes from Romans 8, and I'm Pastor Julie. Verses 12 through 17. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. 
Darcy, and you have for us the gospel. The gospel is John 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Very familiar wow. words, are they not? Wow. Very so much. we've got three little questions. We're kind of modeling here uh, just family discussion were almost like the synagogue, right? They would read, they would read, and then they would discuss. So everyone brings a different perspective, and it's amazing how we've seen this so many times, how yeah. someone's observation helps complete the story for someone else. So these questions are included in the little, uh, little helper there. So what, why would God say and do these things? We, 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 all, we go with the idea that all these words are God's words and are inspired by God. Isaiah, you know, here I am. You would think burning his lips would be um, a little bit painful, right? <laughs> but it also was meant to be purifying, right? And I think I acknowledge that the first time I read through this again uh, in preparing for this, that Yes, that burning of the lips is, is difficult, but we have to be burned <laughs> and to notice what our uh, sins might be and, and to be able to ask for forgiveness. And I found it that it was a cleansing thing, uh, that it cleansed the thoughts that I might have. Uh, and then he goes on uh, as to... I live among a people of unclean lips, and I am a person of unclean lips. And that's our daily life. And we just have to completely, every day, 
be cleansed again. And I thought in uh, when God was trying to explain that we all sin in this earthly body, and if we are born again through the baptism, that God acknowledges our sins and forgives us, and we return, we start our new life now. That whole image of the blood and water being associated with physical birth, but also with spiritual birth. And keeping in mind, too, that at, at this time, when a lot of this was written, the, bot, the spiritual was considered very highly. You wanted to aspire to the spiritual. The flesh was nasty and dirty. Um, maybe we haven't changed all that much, you know? <laughs> That's uh, probably very true. Very, 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 very true. But, uh, he, yeah, so he, he gives that new perspective about, about the body. And those, also that image of Nicodemus coming by night. And uh, I was just talking about uh, kind of how when we have white as our color, that's to remind us that light is brought into the world. God brings light. God lights, and lights everything right. up. And yeah, Jesus is trying to light up Nicodemus, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> in, in, enlighten him. I looked at the gospel. There were two points that I really went off on. And I thought about, first of all, that the wind, that comment about the wind, you know, it was really windy today, okay? And, and we don't know where it comes from, but we just accept it. It's like, it's windy, it's windy, it's windy, but, but the Holy Spirit, we don't think about it. We just know it's there. But the wind, we think about, well, where is it coming from the north? Is it coming from the south? Where is it coming from? Who cares? But it's we a just sign know, to us of what's to come. We, we know that the Holy Spirit is with us. And, and the second thing that really made me think was, was that of, of the, when he made that point about earthly things and heavenly things, he kind of chewed them out. He kind of chewed them out. He said, hey, I liked, I liked what Jesus said. He said, hey, I'm telling you things about, about heavenly things. Yes, Moses. Yes, Noah. Yes, these things. You believed them, and yet I'm telling you things that are going to happen on earth, and you won't believe me, Nicodemus? What is with you? <laughs> you know, that got to me. Why, why isn't he believing him? He's the rabbi of all rabbis. And... and in, uh, we believe him. We believe all the stories we were told when we were young children about Moses and Noah, and yet we believe. But why didn't they believe back then? That because it's coming. Because oh, it was, it was coming. coming. It was coming. So he was. But he kept saying the Messiah is coming. The but Messiah but look what coming. happens at the end of John's Gospel. It's Nicodemus is one of those who come. Nicodemus and Joseph come and ask for the body of Jesus. So it takes Nicodemus a little while. Okay. But he, okay. Get, he does yeah. get it. He gets it eventually. That's, that's why it's always fun to kind okay. of look at the end okay. and see if I remember correctly. Nicodemus does come and he tries to defend Jesus, but... He, he is a, was he scared of him, or was no, he, he just didn't accept him? But as look at you know, look at as as an older man. Yeah, I mean this what we see in the Gospels. I mean that what Jesus says was blasphemy. I mean, I mean, and he defines himself. Somebody said this is kind of the gospel, the, the mini gospel. Jesus says, you know, I came from heaven. I came from above. I can't, I'm the son of man, I'm the, the son of one. God, you the know, only the only one. only one, so he, he makes, he defines himself, and, and yeah, poor Nicodemus, I mean, this is going contrary okay. to, yeah, it's like short circuit, okay. it's like okay. me trying to read that note on the, the shorthand, it's like, yeah, you want a short circuit, we'll show you something, that, that, is, that, that is so awesome, yes. yeah, okay. and yeah, uh, and that, that I, I love in, in Romans, you know, kind of taking the next question here. Um, what is God calling us to do in these readings? I mean, we have literally Isaiah's call story there, his um, having this vision of, in a time of turmoil, what's happening, and, and God's in control. Mm -hmm. The 
think he's calling us to believe and to believe that the Holy Spirit is going to come through us and help us to believe, mm -hmm. give us faith. And not just to believe ourselves, but to share that belief mm -hmm. with others. Because he says, whom shall I send and oh. who will go? Mm -hmm. and, and then the answer is, here am I, send me. That's yeah. what so I we like. don't just keep it within ourselves. We have to share it. Yeah. Now, it might not be by word. It might be by action. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and probably a lot of it by action yeah. because, because we are Lutheran after all. Yeah, after all. <laughs> there's, a good, there's a good song, Here I Am, Lord. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that tells that story. So that's a good reminder yes. about that. Um, the adoption, I mean, what, the way Paul talks about in Romans, you are adopted. I want you to have the spirit of adoption. You, and, and he takes it even a step further and says, you are heirs. Mm -hmm. Think about how often it seems like, you know, you're adopted, but, well, some, yeah, you're adopted, but, but I mean, this count, is, yeah. the, but you don't count, you know, it's <laughs> the other people, you know, how many kids, how many of us, I think, at one point in their life, all kind of went, am I, sh are, are you sure I'm not adopted? <laughs> oh, yes. You know? yes. But that shows yes. our uniqueness. I mean, that shows that each of us, even when we're brought up in a family, in a, a church or a family, a community we're all unique and that's part of it we don't that's how we're unite the unity is that we are unique and each make up part of this and that and this idea of being heirs you know think of the, the treasure and we know you know we know that we know the treasure we're going to receive we know the inheritance before it's eternal life I always tell people, I said, please tell children what's in the will so that I don't have to. <laughs> so they don't fight, you know. Yeah. Just let them be mad at you and not anybody else, each other. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's not going to make any difference. Yeah. But we know, we know right away what, what our inheritance is. And it was interesting, too, we, um, something I read talking about that, you know, Jesus talks about coming down. But then we have that lifting up. We had this earlier, the story of um, where um, when the people were re revolting in the wilderness and the snakes were biting them, mm -hmm. um, that he put that bronze snake, snake. serpent on a pole. Mm -hmm. And if they would look at the pole, so the snakes, it didn't get rid of the snakes. It didn't get rid of, and so this idea of, you know, it doesn't, Jesus didn't come and get rid of sin. But by being lifted on a tree, by being lifted on a pole, we could look at that which was killing us, but also the means by which we could be saved. And who was that person that came up to Joshua and said, do you know that's a pagan? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, we don't have to go there. But think but about Do you know yeah. that snakes are, they are pagan. They're oh. pagans. And, and are you sure you listen to God? Are you sure you heard But it was the right? snake that came and talked to Ed. That you know, Adam and Eve. We have yes, all that. Yes, it was and a snake in the garden. So of Eden. there's many common stories. All yes. these. Remember, remember years ago when you stories of mythology and stuff. It's Very snakes, common stories. Are. But but there's always a different twist. Mm. Every culture has a different twist, and Christianity has a different twist. Any other? Did you feel your callings? I'm still trying to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> I think probably the most memorized verse in the Bible is oh, oh yeah. John 3.16. And I mean, it, it's comforting for God so loved the world. But every once in a while, I like to say to myself, for God so loved Jeannie, that he gave his only son. Oh, or Darcy. Or you know, Mark or Diane. I it just makes it personal. Like oh, yeah. Thank you. That makes it all... Mm -hmm. Eternal. That makes sense. And that's kind of my eternal. next question. How do you see God active in your life? Wow. And that's a beautiful, beautiful way of putting that. Is that he, and God loved the world. It says he didn't like it. Didn't say he liked no. the world. He <laughs> loved the world. I always remember that. He didn't say he liked the world. He never, that's many times point. God has to kind of go, okay, fire and brimstone, yeah, okay, no, yeah, and I know. But, uh, you know, but God loved the world so much that he gave. And this whole idea of gift, he gave his only son. And then I think That's also amazing. we forget to read 17. Oh, yeah. yeah. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in, 
in order that the world through him might be saved, might be saved through him. Yeah. Is that lifting up? Yeah. Yeah. It, it gives me more hope again. So maybe it's best to memorize 16 and 17. <laughs> yeah. What is 17? That's the next. Indeed, I'm God did not space. send the Son space. into the world to condemn the world. It's right but after. In order your, that the world me, might be saved. You had to finish with that. Yeah. Yeah. And you finished with that. I did? Yeah. yeah. I don't have to, my memory. Is there we the go. Best. <laughs> oh, right. oh, I yeah. Well, thank you guys all for this wonderful conversation, yeah, and this is what we would like you all to model. You know, just <laughs> learn from one another, and I and yeah. and, and our especially our online friends here, and uh, just a little reminder for prayers. We're going to lift do some prayers here, and these are kind of written out ahead of time. But prayers are our communication with God. Using the word prayer, each person in your group should could lift up things like praises, reflections, or repentance, awarenesses that they have, and yearnings to God. And we invite you then that you can end each of your petitions with, Lord, in your mercy, and everyone responds, hear our prayer. But Miss Diane is going to be our prayer today. I'm Diane Shuck, and I... I pray. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for the nations currently experiencing war or turmoil. Lord, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for healing uh, for all those who suffer especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community, Good Shepherd, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationship with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. And as we are thankful, we offer to God the uh, uh, pray praise for the many blessings he has given us. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this bread with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us be with you what you have received, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. When we started the celebration of Jesus coming to the earth, we saw and heard for the first time the Trinity at Jesus' baptism we had dinner church. Today, we celebrate our Lord's Supper as a means of new life given to us through the gift of relationship of the triune God. And of course, we've got dessert, right? <laughs> the sweetness of God's relationship with us. And we are reminded that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it for all to eat, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm going to have you each take one as we pass it around. After, later in the, in the meal, he took a cup of wine. He blessed it, and he said, take and, take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And you have right before you your own little cups there. <laughs> Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and fill you with his grace. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we go forth, take the blessing of God. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Marvin? Go in to... peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.